Okay, now that we have the inflation all in check, yeah, that was sarcasm. I don't need a lot of grief down below. We're going to take a next focus in on what's the other thing culprit that's really affecting our country right now. It's the national deficit. So even Jamie Dimon, he's the head of Chase. He comes out just last month and he, he comes out basically every month and saying, our national debt is, is starting to worry us. So if you really go back, if you go back to when Janet Yellen, now Janet Yellen, she's the secretary of the treasury right now under the Biden administration. But what you have to understand is she used to be uh, the Federal Reserve chairman. Okay, so back at that time, that was in, in 2017 when Trump was in, in charge, uh, she was the Federal Reserve chairman. And then when Biden, the Biden administration came in, he hired her as the uh, treasury of the secretary. Okay, so I want you to understand those pieces. All right, so when she was the federal government or federal chairman, she came out and said this, Yellen. $20 trillion national debt should keep people awake at night. Okay, so at that time, again, 2017, the national debt was 20,000 or 20.6 trillion, not thousand trillion. Okay, so if you go down through here, here's the, her exact comment. So people don't say I was quoting out of line. It would simply say that I'm very worried about the sustainability of the US debt trajectory. Yellen says, our current uh, debt to GDP ratio of about 75% is not frightening but it's also not low. Okay, I agree with that. It's the type of thing that should keep people awake at night is what she added. Okay, so now she's the treasury of this, she's in charge of this uh, treasury. But I want you guys to understand what's the national debt or what causes the national debt? Well, it's right through here. This is government spending. Okay, it's 6.13 trillion dollars. And then you have over here, we bring in four point something trillion in taxes. So this deficiency here, well, they got to put it on a credit card. And the way the government puts it on a credit card, they issue treasury bonds. Okay, so that's what I need you guys to understand, which is debt. Okay, what's that debt load right now? 34.8, and this will be 35 trillion, trillion dollars soon. When Yellen came out, remember what it was when she was back here and she's like, oh, it's not that much of a concern. It was 20, what was it again? 20.6 trillion. Here's why I bring this up. Just today, she comes out, and he, here's an interview with CNBC, and I know I've been doing this a lot, but I think a lot of people are starting to like this, and, and, and I kind of enjoy because I can show you guys what's going on and make, make it make sense to you. So let's go over this real quick so you can understand what's going on, and then I think you'll be able to fill in the gap by yourself. So let's listen to this uh, interview, and then you make the conclusions on, you know, is she pivoting, or what in the world is she talking about? Talking about bringing down the cost of certain things. When you were running the Fed, you talked about debt and deficits all the time, and you encouraged Congress to try to bring those things down. Right. We are now at a U.S. budget deficit has reached $1.2 uh, trillion. It has not come down. Uh, it has actually only gone up. What are you doing? Well, it has come down since the pandemic. Since, since the pandemic on, on a, yes, but um, on, a, on a total number, we're in, we're in a, we're, we're in a we have a real challenge. Is there a plan to bring the bring this number down materially? And I'm talking about the total total debt load. Okay. Well, you got to remember, the administration they they love giveouts. Okay, right now. And if this was the other side of the coin, I'd be I'd be calling them out as well. But now they're going to start saying, remember, they're not going to tax you. They're going to come up with different variations of tactics to say, well, the wealthy is going to have to pay it but then we all end up paying it. Okay, so let's see what her take is. Interesting to hear this. That you see the president pursuing. Well, I think that if the debt is stabilized relative to the size of the economy, that we're in a reasonable place. Um, the way I look at it is that we should be looking at the real interest cost of the debt. That's really right. what the burden is. and. Um, in the budget the president presented for this coming fiscal year, um, he proposes $3 trillion of deficit reduction over the next decade. And that's sufficient to basically keep the debt. Over the next decade. So he pretty much knows he'll probably be out the next cycle. And, and again, I don't need grief down below, folks. This is just, look at the polls. Um, so over the next 10 years, well, whatever, you guys know where I'm going. To right. income ratio stable, and this interest burden would be stabilized right. at but how much of that is increasing taxes? Level. 
versus actually cutting costs? Well, um, it's difficult to cut costs. Discretionary spending, um, which is what's right. governed by appropriations, it has fallen relative to the size of GDP. And um, if once you involved in looking what's, what, right. what's in there, um, more than half of it is defense. Um, it's really not possible to get cuts there. And a growing uh, source of expenditure is um, for retirement right. programs, Social Security, and Medicare. No. And, you know, I, I think it's right, that t especially the Job Cuts and Tax Act, right. um, provisions of which will expire at the end of next year, really resulted in a substantial loss in revenue. And so undoing some of that and asking the wealthiest and highest income Americans to pay their fair share. Okay, that's enough. Did you, did you hear what she says? We can't cut any of the fiscal spending. So it means they're not going to cut anything. So what does that mean? It actually means we have to increase right through here. You have to increase the revenue. Well, how do you do that? Well, the, the, the government doesn't make money. They can create money like they're doing kind of up through here. But they, they, the only way that they have the ability to bring in additional revenue is to increase taxes. Okay, but they said they're not going to do that. Now, what they'll say is we're going to increase the, we're going to tax the wealthy and the rich and the corporations and all this. Other. They've been kicking this can for decades. So I just want you guys to understand the deficit is huge and they have no plans on doing anything of it. And then what's going to happen is the next administration that's going to come in, they're going to be facing this whole dilemma. And then what's going to happen at that point? I'll be a critic then as well, if, it, if the criticism is due. So that's basically what I want to show you guys today is how, the, how now the national deficit is one of the biggest culprits that we're going to have when it comes to interest rates, because it all plays a role in this. Uh, so I just want you guys to understand that part of it. So let's get this out of the way. So far today, we had nothing but really good information when it comes into uh, with rates and inflation and so forth. So right now we have the MBS market it is up 19 ticks, which that means for you guys, rates might ease just a little bit. Where are they right now? Well, they eased 0.01. I'm expecting those to go probably the 6.95. It might even sit, uh, pivot on the 6.9 by the end of the day or maybe the opening of tomorrow. So that's my report for today, guys. My name is Dan Frio. If you want to look up me on the web to see what I do, how I do things and so forth, just go to therateupdate.com and there I am. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so over there so you can be informed every video I come out with. Hopefully you can learn something. Have a great day, folks, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.